Hello there. Oops. Uh, <laughs> wrong game. Let me just... There we go. Much better. So, I've been playing Konkai Star Rail for a while. Which means I'm pretty much an expert in the game. Oh. Well, uh, moving on. So, one of the things I find interesting in Honkai Star Rail is the pad of the Aeons for their characters' kits. Which makes me think, what if Genshin Impact follows the pad of the Aeons just like Honkai Star Rail? Now with that, I will be ranking every playable Genshin characters from each region based on what their pad will be. Starting from... Onstead. But before we get to the video, you know what to do. Subscribe, turn on the notification bell, so you don't miss out? Did you do it? Go on, don't be shy, click it. Well, whatever you've chosen, I hope the button is pressed and the bell's ringing. But hey, if it isn't, eh, I can't really stop ya. <laughs> and now, with that out of the way, let's get to it, shall we? Okay, first things first, what exactly are the paths of the Aeons? Now, if you guys don't play Honkai Star Rail, I'm gonna try to be brief on how I'll describe the paths. But if you're already a Star Rail player, maybe this will remind you guys what each path does in case you forgot. Okay, there are seven main paths for each character in Honkai Star Rail. Starting with... Destruction. Destruction characters are known to be able to self-sustain and take damage. And they also possess capabilities to deal both single and AoE damage. Sometimes they get stronger when they take damage, or when they deal damage. In some cases, they can also self-heal to sustain themselves. Erudition Characters who follow the path of erudition means they have a wide variety of AoE attacks. Both their skills and burst almost every time deal damage to all enemies on field. In some cases, even their normal attacks can hit multiple enemies. So any AoE-based damage are basically aspects for the path of erudition. The Hunt Alright, the Hunt characters are the opposite of erudition. Instead of dealing AoE damage, they mainly focus on single-target attacks. The Han characters are mostly also known to be fast and agile and have higher speed compared to other units. Both their skills and burst deals massive single-target damages to enemies, which makes them perfect units for 1v1 or boss fight situations. Preservation Preservation, just like what it means, is to keep things preserved, which in this case, keep the team protected. Preservation characters are tanks and protector of the party. They protect the team from damage mostly by creating a shield, or by taunting the enemies to hit them instead of the core party members. Some cases, they can also protect the team from so enemy yeah, crowd control. Their role is too. to tank and minimize as many damage possible taken by the team from enemy's attack. Harmony. So the roles of harmony characters is to act as the buffer for the entire party. Need an extra attack bonus for your DPS? Well, harmony characters got you covered. Do you find your overall damage pretty low? Then Harmony characters can easily buff your damage. Are you scared of fast enemies blitzing you before you even take action? Look no further because Harmony characters can buff your speed so you blitz the enemies instead. But wait, there's more! Harmony characters can even advance forward your action so you're always the first to attack! Only Bronya. Nihility What is Nihility? Nihility is the opposite of Harmony. Instead of buffing, Nihility debuffs. No, not debuffing the party members, that would be pretty stupid. They instead debuff the enemies in various ways. Like reducing their attack, reducing their defense, slowing them down, imprisoning them, 
and sometimes even applying an insane amount of DOT. Yep, that damage is real, the DOT literally eats the enemy's HP like that. The possibilities are limitless! So, if you're too lazy to buff your team, you can inset the buff the enemies with Nihility. Abundance Healers Oh, you expect a longer description? Healers that cleanse your debuffs. Uh, yeah, that's it. Alright, now you understand the paths of the Aeons. Congratulations. But here's a quick side note. Genshin Impact is an open world game, while Honkai Star Rail is a turn-based game. Therefore being open world, it's a bit confusing to determine a few paths like for example, the path of the hunt. Since there isn't actually a proper single target attack in Genshin considering how enemies can easily group up and all of them will get hit by an attack that's more effective against only one enemy. Therefore, we are going to determine each path based on the character's overall kit and effectiveness, including some of their constellation and passive abilities. Alright, with that being said, let's begin our analysis, starting with... Physical Traveler. You heard me? No, I'm not joking. Traveler, but without the elements? Get it? Okay, good. The first ever character we get in Genshin Impact. And we may not realize this entire time the physical element exists long before Trailblazer and Natasha exist. But anyway, with the lack of proper constellation and overall kit other than just a normal attack, Physical Traveler is pretty much just an NPC at this point. I'd like to say he doesn't really follow any paths for that, but you know what, he's capable of doing normal attacks. And I believe normal attacks are mostly more effective in a 1v1 situation, therefore putting Physical Traveler in the path of the hunt. Animo Traveler what? Were you expecting Amber? Too bad. Animal Traveler's elemental skill Palm Vortex creates a small animal vacuum that deals damage to enemies nearby and pushing them away. And just like every mechanic of Animo, when it comes to contact with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, and Electro, Palm Vortex is gonna be infused with that element and deal additional swirl damage. The Elemental Burst Gust Surge summons a mini tornado that also absorbs the elements nearby, enhancing it and pulling small enemies towards it while dealing damage. Constellation 1 makes Palm Vortex capable of pulling enemies closer, controlling them. Constellation 2 gives Animal Traveler energy recharge. Constellation 4 reduces interruptions and damage taken when casting Palm Vortex. And C6 reduces enemy resilience to swirled elements. Also, the passive talent Second Wind makes Palm Vortex kills regenerate Traveler's HP a little. Now, due to both the skills and burst being more effective for crowd control, DOT, and defense shredding, Animal Traveler follows the path of Nihility. Amber Outrider Amber reporting for duty. Seems like we have stumbled across the Torch of Genshin Impact. Amber's elemental skill Explosive Puppet summons Baron Bunny and Field taunting the enemies to hit it while slowly acts as a ticking time bomb that explodes when the time is up, dealing AoE damage. Meanwhile, her elemental burst Fiery Rain creates an AoE that summons Fire Arrows dealing damage to enemies in the area. This can further be enhanced with a passive talent every arrow finds its target that boosts the crit rate and AoE of Fiery Rain. Constellation 1 adds an extra arrow to her charge aim shot, C2 enhances Baron Bunny and make it capable to be triggered manually if shot in its foot, C4 adds an extra Baron Bunny and also reduces the cooldown for the skill, and C6 is straight up just harmony. Judging from the constellations, it seems like Amber's overall kit mostly involves Baron Bunny as the main damage source. Then we have her Gliding Champion passive that reduces gliding stamina. This is a mobility passive and mobility means the hunt. But overall, unless you use Amber as a sniper DPS and abuse the passive talent Precise Shot that boosts Amber's attack when she hits a weak spot, it's safe to say that Amber follows the path of erudition with all those AoE attacks. Kaya the Cavalry Captain for the Knights of Avonius is an interesting character. 
His elemental skill Frost Knot unleashes a small ice beam towards enemies. While his elemental burst Glacial Walt surrounds himself with ice sizzles for some time, which I think is kinda similar to Jing Liu's impair technique. Constellation 1 boosts normal attack's crit rate against enemies affected by Frost Knot. Constellation 2 extends the duration of Glacial Waltz when enemies are defeated by it. C4 is the interesting part. Dude literally creates a Noel shield for himself at low health. Then we have C6 which increases the Ice Soul in Glacial Waltz and regenerates energy. The passive talent Cold-Blooded Strike makes Kaya capable of healing himself a little every time Frost Knot hits an enemy. And we got Glacial Heart, which gives Kaya extra particles from enemies frozen by Frost Knot. Oh, what's this path you ask? It's the path of remembrance. What's the path of remembrance? I'm too lazy to explain. Now what path will Kaya be joining? I consider the path of destruction, but with Kaya having very little healing from Frosna, and overall better effectiveness in single target combat, since he has better efficiency at defeating enemies one by one instead of multiple at once, and the fact that Kaya possesses a mobility passive that reduces sprinting stamina, Kaya will be joining the path of the hunt. Balls. Lisa. So Lisa's skill Violet Arc has a tap version which creates a single Electro Ball and a hold version which creates a warning area that a storm is approaching before striking unlucky troublemakers. Then we have Lightning Rose, her burst, creating an AoE of Lightning Field that casually zaps enemies who dare to get into that field. And it can reduce enemies' defense too with a passive talent Static Electricity Field. Lisa's tap skill also has an ability to apply conductive status to enemies, which stacks up to 3 times and greatly increases the damage of Violet Arc. The passive induced aftershock also applies conductive status to enemies when using charge attack. C1 regenerates extra energy against enemies hit by Violet Arc's hold skill. Constellation 2 increases defense and interruption resistance when casting Violet Arc. C4 increases the Lightning Bolt's count from Lightning Rose. C6 applies immediate tree conductive status to enemies when Lisa gets on field. Well, unless you use Lisa like a Nihildi character for applying Electro Charge, Dendro Damage Boost, or maybe just Defense Shredding, which I think everybody does, but I guess it's quite obvious that Lisa will be joining the Path of Erudition because of her AoE damage. Noel. I'll be honest here, this made Naig is actually pretty complicated for path determination. Her elemental skill Breastblade shields allies. Meanwhile, her elemental burst sweeping time is used for offense. The passive talent Devotion creates a shield for low HP allies. Then we have the passive Nice and Clean which reduces Breastblade cooldown when Noelle performs 4 normal attacks. Sounds simple enough, right? But the constellations is where things get complicated. C1 is clearly abundance because it boosts her healing chance by 100%. But constellation 2, charge attack enhancement, Noel is slowly becoming a damage dealer from that. Constellation 4 traces back to her shield, making the shield explode, dealing damage to enemies when it breaks or the duration expires. When Noel gets to C6, everything changes. Sweeping Time will convert a big portion of Noelle's defense into her attack, effectively turning Noelle into a DPS. So, Noelle's path could be different depending on how you build her. And I can see three ways this could go. First are people who don't own Zhongli and stacks a ridiculously high amount of defense on Noelle, turning her into the true preservation unit. Second is pure abundance Noel for those who stack a lot of healing artifacts on Noel, basically making everyone casually forget Kokumi exists. And finally, the C6 menaces who turns Noel to Navia cause they lost the 50-50. But overall, since Noel's whole thing is seemingly asking her to use her shield as often as possible, I'm gonna say preservation is the correct path for base Noel. Razor. Is that a JoJo reference? Razor's elemental skill Claw and Thunder makes Razor slash or smash the target with Electro. 
And this skill can also be used for mining. Razor's Elemental Burst Lightning Fang summons a Stan and turns Razor into a JoJo reference. Constellation 1 increases Razor's damage when he picks up an Elemental Orb or Particle. Constellation 2 increases Razor's crit rate against low HP enemies. Constellation 4 makes Claw and Thunder Tap skill reduce enemies' defense. And C6 enhances Razor's normal attack, making it capable of summoning an extra Thunderbolt towards enemies. He has the same mobility passive for sprinting like Kaya's. The passive talent awakening reduces the cooldown for Claw and Thunder and resets the cooldown immediately when Razor uses Lightning Fang. And the passive talent Hunger increases Razor's energy recharge when his energy is below 50%. Now due to Razor's capabilities in both single target and somewhat AoE attacks, including good amount of self sustenance Razor will be joining the Path of Destruction. Diluc. Finally, our first non-traveler 5-star. Diluc's elemental skill Searing Onslaught makes him capable of doing 3 different pyro slashes at enemies. Then we got Dawn, Diluc's signature burst, which summons a giant phoenix from Diluc's slash that violently knocks back every single target in the way, before infusing his normal attack with pyro. His passive talent Relentless reduces his charge attack stamina cost and increases the duration of it. And we get the Blessing of the Phoenix which enhances his ultimate Pyro Infusion and extends it by 2 seconds. Constellation wise, I don't really see anything too unique about it. All his constellation enhances his overall kit. It doesn't exactly change anything unlike Kaya's Constellation 4 which is very unique. According to the data we gathered, everything on Diluc is a perfect criteria for the Path of Destruction. Easy. Venti It's Arkan and Alyssa's time. Venti's elemental skill Skyward Sonnet creates a small AoE of winds capable of knocking small enemies airborne. The hold version of the skill makes the AoE wider and when enhanced by the passive talent Embrace of Winds creates a wind current that allies can use to glide around. Venti's Elemental Burst Winds Grand Ode creates a large wind vortex that pulls all small enemies in the surrounding, controlling them and dealing DOT, which also can be enhanced by the elements. Also, the passive talent Storm Eye regenerates energy to all characters that have the same element with the swirled element of Winds Grand Ode. C1 adds extra arrows to Venti's charge shot. C2 decreases enemies' resilience when hit by Venti's skill. C4 boosts Venti's animal damage when he picks up an elemental orb. And finally, C6. You know the 4-piece Veritas and Venerar set bonus? Yeah, they're literally the same thing. Anyway, Venti is obviously Nihilti. Crowd control, DOT, and debuffs. Unless you're a menace who love erudition and build Venti as a DPS. Barbara. Okay, let's see. Her skill heals. And her burst heals. Uh, why do I even bother? Barbara's joining abundance. Diona. Diona's elemental skill Icy Paws shoots out well. Icy Paws to enemies before creating a shield for allies. The hold version of this skill shoots out more Icy Paws to hit enemies and have a longer shield duration with the cost of longer cooldown. Her burst signature mix creates an AoE of Ice Field that heals allies on it while dealing damage to enemies. Diona has an interesting Harmony Preservation passive that boosts movement speed and decreased stamina consumption on allies shielded by Icy Paws called Cat's Tail Secret Menu. Then we have a Nihility passive called Drunkard Sparse, reducing enemies' attack when they are in Signature Mix Fill. Constellation 1 regenerates energy when Signature Mix ends. Constellation 2 is an upgrade enhancement for Icy Paws. C4 reduces Diona's charge aim shot time in Signature Mix Fill. And C6 increases healing or elemental mastery when characters enter Signature Mix. Well, what can I say? Diona is a perfect combination of both preservation and abundance. Although considering Diona's shield is less preferred compared to someone like Zhongli and only absorbs cryo damage better than any other damage, and the fact that most of her constellation involves signature mix, 
I'll just put her in abundance to accompany Barbara. Aloy. Hold on, Aloy? Wait a minute. You know what? Let me just... Okay, there we go. Klee. Hmm... Klee. Destruction. Jean, acting Grandmaster of Mondstadt. Jean's skill Galeblade eats the enemies out of the orbit. The hold version pulls multiple enemies closer to her before eating them out of the orbit as well. Jean's elemental burst Dandelion Breeze creates an animal field that heals ally scaling of Jean's attack, which can be recharged faster with the passive Let the Wind Lead. And we got Wind Companion that slowly heals the entire party when Jean hits something with her normal attack. Jean can arguably infinitely heal everyone using this by striking a cat. So, if you guys own Jean and everybody's at life support but you're too lazy to pull out a healer, eat food, or go to a statue, find a cat and let Jean swing her sword around the cat for a while and your party member's HP will be full in no time. Constellation 1 enhances Gale Blade's pulling speed and damage. Constellation 2 turns Jean into a harmony character every time she absorbs elemental particles. And the buffs she provides are movement speed and also combat speed. C4 reduces enemies' animal resilience in Dandelion Breeze field, which pairs greatly with Farazan for maximum animal damage. And C6 gives everyone damage reduction in Dandelion Brace Field to the point that you take no damage at all if you stack enough damage reduction skills. Overall, Jean is very all-rounded, but since she heals with attack percent and uses a sword, she's probably Genshin's Lucha. So... Abundance. But unless you prefer the Pat of the Hun like me, go build physical Jean. But if you mostly use her yeeting power, or happens to be a whale who abused Dandelion Breeze constellation, that's Nihility. Mona Mona's elemental skill Mirror Reflection of Doom creates a phantom reflection that taunts nearby enemies before exploding. The phantom can also be triggered with a passive Come and Get Me hack when Mona's dashing. Mona's elemental burst Stellar Phantasm creates a bubble that can trap enemies in the surrounding when Mona's skill is present and field. Also, this skill greatly boosts damage. Mona also possesses another passive talent called Waterborne Destiny that increases her Hydro damage based on her energy recharge. For constellations, I don't really want to bother because Mona is clearly a harmony character with her damage boosting buffs. Sucrose Sucrose skill a stable animal hypostatus creation 6308 summons an AoE attack of the animal hypostatus that can pull enemies nearby towards it. Sucrose's burst forbidden creation is summer 75 type 2, summons the animal hypostatus again and pulling surrounding enemies towards it, crowd controlling them and also infusing itself with the elements dealing extra damage. The passive talent Molis Pavonius boosts elemental mastery for all party members excluding Sucrose when she uses her burst. And speaking of EM boost, Catalyst Conversion also does the same and triggers when Sucrose does a swirl reaction, but the EM boost is a lot smaller. C1 adds an extra charge for a stable animal hypostatus creation 6308. C2 extends the duration of forbidden creation is Somer 75 type 2. C4 lowers the cooldown of a stable animal hypostatus creation 6308 when Sucrose does a normal or charge attack against enemies. And C6 boosts elemental damage of the swirled elements of forbidden creation is Somer 75 type 2, just like Kazuha. It's cool to know that Sucrose possesses the combination aspects of both Harmony and Nihility. But due to Sucrose being able to crowd control using both her skills and burst at the same time dealing DOT, I think Sucrose fits the pad of Nihility better. But hey, once Sucrose reaches all 6 of her constellations, she can freely swap into a Harmony unit. Oh, and if you prefer DPS Sucrose, she becomes an Erudition character. 
Yeah, Miss Al Albedo. Yes, science. Albedo. Abiogenesis Solar Isotoma. Wow, that's a cool name. Anyway, Albedo skill summons a flower that deals AoE geo damage while also creating a geo field. Solar Isotomus will also makes all attacks deals extra geo damage called Transient Blossom. It can also be used as an elevator when characters stand on top of it. Transient Blossoms can increase its damage to low HP enemies from the passive talent Calcite Might. Rite of Progeniture, Tectonic Tide. Albedo really got some drip in combat ability names, huh? Rite of Progeniture Tectonic Tide creates an AoE of Geocrystals that deals damage in the surrounding and can be enhanced if Solar Isotoma is on the field. The passive Homuncular Nature makes Albedo's burst capable of increasing nearby party members' elemental mastery. C1 and C2 kinda gives him a little blessing of destruction, while C4 and C6 turns him into a Harmony character. AKA I'm too lazy to explain because some of his constellations are too complicated for my brain. Besides, with both Albedo's skill and burst dealing AoE damage, it's clear that Albedo is joining the pad of erudition. Sucrose? We have to cook! Rosaria Rosaria's skill Ravaging Confession pulls off a nothing personal kit before appearing behind them and tricking, backstabbing, and possibly bamboozling the enemies. But that's not all because Rosaria's crit rate will also be boosted from the passive talent Regina Probationum. Meanwhile, Rosaria's burst, Rites of Termination, sticks a frozen lance to the ground creating a small AoE ice field dealing cryo damage nearby. The burst can increase the crit rate of all party members standing on its field excluding Rosaria herself with a passive talent Shadow Samaritan. Also, movement speed boosts at night time with a passive talent Nightwalk. Anyway, C1 enhances Rosaria's attack speed and normal attack damage when she crits. C2 increases the duration of Rites of Termination. C4 regenerates an extra of Rosaria's energy if Ravaging Confession crits. And C6 reduces enemies' physical resilience if they're hit by Rites of Termination. Now, I believe the meta prefers Harmony Rosaria because of her crit rate boosting. But out of respect for her overall kit and potential, we'll just assume that Rosaria is a damage dealer. Now, I know Rites of Termination is AoE, but it still requires enemies to step into it. And I think Rosaria's potential is unlocked at C6 as a physical DPS. Like Kaya, Rosaria is better at single target combat and dealing with enemies one by one, thus putting her in the path of the hunt. Besides, her kits are crit related anyway, just like simulated universe hunt blessings. Eula Do I need to say more? Destruction. Bennett's elemental skill passion over. Huh. That's not supposed to happen. Anyway, Bennett's elemental burst fantastic voyage. Uh. Well guys, seems like Bennett's bad luck has cut the budget short on this part of the video. But since Bennett is almost always literally used for attack buff, he will be joining the Path of Harmony. Fischl I kinda got a little trouble deciding Fischl's path at first. Her skill Night Rider summons Oz to the field and Oz will shoot bolts of lightning at the enemies. Her burst Midnight Phantasmogaria transforms Fischl into Oz for a while before putting Oz in the field again. This skill resets the cooldown of Knight Rider. Oz can also summon Lightning Bolts towards surrounding when an Electro Reaction occurs from the passive talent Undone Be Die Sinful Hacks. And the passive Stellar Predator makes Oz capable of raining down AoE Lightning Bolts again towards enemies when Fischl does a fully charged aim shot at him. I've been playing Genshin for years and I just learned that now. 
Wow. Anyway, Constellation 1 makes its official normal attack shoots extra bolts. Constellation 2 enhances Night Rider and increases its AoE. C4 enhances Midnight Phantasmogaria damage and also regenerates Fischl's HP when the skill ends. As for C6, Oz deals follow-up attacks with our current character when he's on field. Congratulations, you have unlocked a new path I didn't mention. This is the Path of Elation. No, not Erudition. But speaking of Erudition, since Fischl does more AoE attacks than I expected, Fischl joins the Erudition gang anyway in the end. Although, the hunt is very much available for physical official. Mika. At last, we have reached the final Monstead character on the list. For that reason, let's make it quick. Elemental skill. Attack speed buff. And then we have physical damage buff. Elemental burst. Healing. Buff count 2. Heal count 1. Therefore, Mika is a Harmony character, or Abundance, depends on how you use him. And that is every Mondstadt character rank based on their Honkai Star Rail paths. Here is the complete tier list for this analysis. You guys may pause the video to observe this tier list. Also, I'm planning to make more analysis like this for each regions of Teyvat. So, if you don't want to miss out, subscribe and turn on the bell so YouTube recommends them to your screen. Also, credits to Balls, uh, I mean X Revel, aka Vic Star Gaming, for giving me Cleese clips. If you guys have different thoughts in mind about the overall tier list, feel free to discuss in the comment section below. And if you want to test out the tier list for yourself, the link is in the description and pinned comment. The tier list will hopefully be updated every time Hoyaverse releases a new drip marketing. I do have to warn you though, some of the images are cursed memes as you already see. So, figure it out yourselves who's who. My name is Strangely Human, and I'll see you guys... When y'all probably have grandkids or something.